Now that we have the uh, piston out of the cylinder here, we're just going to take some uh, very fine grit, uh, 1500, 2000 grit wet sandpaper, and just kind of take off any of the surface rust that we see. Should be a really polished finish. And we're going to do the same thing on the uh, interior of the um, the cylinder. And what I find really helpful is just like a cheap muffin tin and just fill it up with brake fluid. Um, I've got one that I use for like polishing and then one for lubricant. Um, so I've got basically two sides, this being the polishing side. So we've got most of the uh, wear and tear off of this uh, piston. There is one spot right here. You can see it, it's not really pitting. I mean, it, it's not deep at least, but um, it's very surface. But I'm hoping that will actually ride above the O-ring on the channel. I'm pretty sure it rides above that. So I think that'll be okay. But um, all the rest of it looks great. I mean, it polishes out really nicely. So what we're going to do now is do the same thing with the internal cylinder housing here. The cylinder bore has been uh, polished pretty well. Now what I'm going to do is um, take out the rubber o-ring there. Um, they recommend in the Bentley to use a plastic piece, but I don't actually have one with me. Um, I was thinking one of those, they're called a spudger, uh, that you use to uh, replace like your iPhone um, glass and whatnot. That might work. Um, however, I've had actually pretty good luck if I'm very careful using just a standard pick and poking right in the center of the O-ring. So that's what I'm going to do. So just super gently, super carefully. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see this, but just enough to like get the meat of the O-ring hooked. And then you can kind of, kind of work it out. Usually. So just enough to like lift up. A section and then you can work it out. There it is. Okay, here's our new rubber o ring. I'm going to coat it in fresh brake fluid and I've already coated the inside there. And I'm just going to fit it into place. So it's sticking up just slightly over this the surface of the cylinder bore, which is which is good. So when we go to seat this the uh, piston, um, it'll it'll catch slightly. So we just need to make sure that we're really well uh, lubricated. And before I put the cylinder or this uh, piston in, there are these notches. We want to make note of where these go. And what we'll need to do is take a look at the backing plate that sits between uh, this piece and the brake pad and see how we need to orient it, you know, I, whether it's notches downward, it's slightly, slightly clocked. So we have the <coughs> cylinder cleaned out and we have the piston ready. So lubricated the piston and placed it and what we want to make sure of is that the piston is clocked similar to the backing plate. So the backing plate is going to slide right there and these tabs need to engage with the um, cutouts on the uh, piston. Just take a little bit of brake fluid and go around and um, I'm just going to gently work it down in so that it's pretty square. And then they make a special tool that actually compresses it in, but I find a um, pair of channel lock pliers and just going from side to side very, very, very gently. Um, and kind of this side and the opposite side. So just kind of working it around. That'll get it past the seal and kind of um, 
help seat it. And then what you can do is just use like a big um, clamp and just compress it. The piston is installed. and So now that it's time to install the dust boot, um, you'll see that it accordion flexes out to allow movement for the piston. Uh, this outer edge here is actually very stiff. Um, you can compress it a little bit, but it's pretty stiff. I mean, it won't bend this direction hardly at all. There's a metal band inside. So we need to press that onto the caliper body, and then this inner lip sits on the piston itself. Now, there is a special tool that you can use to seat this, but um, I'm assuming it's really expensive since it's in the Bentley, but <laughs> what I did was make a uh, make a tool. So this right here is a um, electrical conduit part. I believe it's two inches. Um, might be best to take your seal down to your hardware store and just double check, but um, yeah, it says right there. Uh, this is a Cantex two inch. Uh, this is a box bushing like an electrical box bushing, I think. Um, and it, it's pretty long normally. What I did was I just chopped it off. Um, and uh, this makes a great contact surface for the top of the uh, seal here. Now, trying to, you know, fit a clamp over there, it's, you know, there's nothing to clamp to. So what I took was, was a plumbing uh, ABS black plastic uh, piece so uh, I'm assuming this is probably two inch as well or inch and three quarters inch and a half something like that and uh, it also is a little bit longer and cut that down and so these actually made up really well I mean they still have a little bit of spin but there's no sideways action it fits they complement each other very well so we're gonna install this into the um, caliper and then align it as best we can and just start pressing down with a big clamp. So the lip here on the actual body of the caliper is where we want to see the uh, outside portion of the uh, seal. Now we do want to try and seat the in inner lip first otherwise it won't really it, it'll fight you if you don't. So using the tool, able to get the uh, dust boot seated. Now what we're going to do is uh, take a look at the other side. So the dust boot's already pulled out. We're going to clamp this, this guy and then uh, use some compressed air to gently pop out the, uh, the other uh, piston. So using the tool, able to get the uh, dust boot seated. Now what we're gonna do is uh, take a look at the other side. So the dust boot's already pulled out. We're gonna clamp this, this guy, and then uh, use some compressed air to gently pop out the, uh, the other uh, piston. And then do the same thing. So I'm actually going to uh, catch up with you uh, once that's all done and we're ready to install back into the, uh, back into the van. Now let's get the uh, machined uh, rotors on here so we'll pull these screws out and get our turn rotors onto the hub and let's torque these uh, Bentley says 14 to 18 pounds I found a bit of an error in the Bentley. Um, the locating uh, bolt, the one with the shoulder on it, that actually on the 73 uh, and up, the ones with the larger uh, caliper, 
that actually goes to the top. I was having a problem when I was installing on um, on this spindle here. Um, this guy would go into the bottom, but the longer, um, just standard bolt would not seat all the way on the top. So I uh, did some research on the Samba and found that on the 73 and up, there was actually a change. And so now let's get this installed. So let's put the locating pin in at the top this time. So the caliper bolts are 116 pounds of torque. So I uh, got those torqued down. And uh, now what we're gonna do is install the backing plates. So the new brake pads came with uh, this goop stuff. Um, it's basically like a, uh, a quiet. So it'll, it'll make the brakes hopefully not squeak due to the mounting hardware. So we've got some new pads. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna sandwich them. And slide them in here. I'm gonna attempt to do so anyway. So obviously new brake hardware is recommended. Um, I just don't have it on hand and want to drive. So I'm going to probably replace this stuff here pretty soon. And I'm just gonna gently tap this in um, so that they seat fully. Now, Bentley recommends that you don't use a um, a drive, but their concern is that you're gonna break the tip off here. But I'm just gonna do it very gently. Okay, then we have to hook up the brake line here. It turns out that this metal brake line uh, does need to be replaced. It has a definitely a leak in there, so I'm going to be replacing that. But as far as the caliper rebuild, um, the only thing that's left is um, once you get your metal line connected, um, you just need to bleed the brakes. Um, make sure to um, actually pump your brakes and make sure that your pedal is nice and solid. And that these guys are, you know, clamped down on the pad or on the uh, rotor. That way, uh, if you back up or something and uh, forget to do that, you don't have any brakes momentarily. So it'll it'll freak you out in the least case. But worst case, I mean, you're going to be flying back and don't have any brakes. So make sure to do that. And um, and I'm I'm stoked because now we have some hopefully some decent brakes up front. I just have to get this replaced and um, then we can go on a little bit further of a test drive.